Hello everyone. So in this video, um, this video was actually a suggestion from Scare Tactics on since he had made a comment of to do a video that are through my experience what I believe are the top faultiest animatronics of all time at from Spirit Halloween. Um, being a seasonal employee that's been you know, working at Spirit every year since 2012, but buying animatronics every year since 2009, I definitely have a good experience with faulty animatronics. So I don't know if he met, like did a top 10, but originally I was going to do top 10, but there was no, the, the thing with, the thing is, I have a lot to say before I get into this because there are more animatronics, there's more faulty animatronics than there are animatronics that aren't faulty, unfortunately. Especially, you know, during techie, a lot of them are going to be old techie animatronics. You know, I've talked about this so many times. I'm basically a broken record when it comes to this topic because I've said the same thing about the same animatronics. But it, my story doesn't change. It's my story. I've experienced what I've experienced. So, um, but I also had to, you know, really think about it because animatronics, you know, they, like, a lot of people probably assume all old Jemmy animatronics are really, really bad quality because now you can't find an old Jemmy animatronic that is fully working. If it hasn't had repairs yet, it's not going to be fully functional. There's you're going to have to replace some split gears and other work. But the thing is, they weren't always faulty. You know, they were when they first came out. They weren't. Jemmy animatronics were not faulty. They did last seasons to come. They lasted a while before they had issues. They had you know sometimes yeah maybe a wire pulled off of some movement or you know you had a belt. One thing is that I had to exclude from all this is belts. Um, for those of you who may not be as experienced with animatronics, pretty much almost every animatronic has one of these in them. It is what is on the motor. It, there's two pulleys. There's a motor, the motor shaft piece, and then the other um, part, which the shaft gear is connected to this pulley. And this is what drives, this is what makes the whole animatronic move if all the gears are, you know, right, not broken. But over time, these, the ones that the factories used, become stretched out after some time. There's certain years the, the, the companies put belts that are so bad, they're, they go bad within just handfuls of activations. And other times, they're not so bad. But... Regardless, every animatronic is going to need this replacing at some point, and it's a pretty simple, easy fix. It's usually very easy to get to. You don't have to disassemble the animatronic too much to replace this. It's pretty straightforward most of the time. So I had to leave that out of it because no matter what, animatronics are those are always going to go bad in animatronics at some point, and that alone has to be excluded from the animatronic from being faulty. I can use a kind of like a car analogy to, you know, uh, kind of um, make it more understand uh, understandable. You know, cars need an oil change or a refill up on gas every once in a while, you know. Well, same thing, those belts go bad in animatronics and every once in a while those are going to need replacing. Now, the ones that they come with, you know, become stretched over time, eventually, let's you know, harvest their souls, the arms lift up, and then they slip down. That's because the belt is bad. It's too stretched. Sometimes the belt just completely stretches too much, and it just falls off. So the motor's just buzzing, and nothing can move because it's fallen off. Um, and then other times they just completely snap. These ones in particular, when you go, you can get these. I buy them from Ace Hardware. These actually snap after about a year or I have to replace these about every year or two because they they dry rot and they snap after after a while so 
it's something that you just have to do every once in a while so there are some things that have more basic mechanisms that those don't wear out on there's a lot of animatronics like death row and all those that i've never had to replace a belt on but a lot of anim most animatronics you do so anyways i had to exclude that again the aging when animatronics get older they become more brittle and you know the older something gets the less likely it's going to work i can use the car analogy again you know the older v of a vehicle you have the more repairs it's going to end up needing you know the more repairs are are going to have to be done to it it's the same thing with these animatronics the older they get the less likely they are to work the more repairs are going to be needed even if you fix them before they're going to need to be fixed again in a in the few coming years you're going to have you're going to ha run into new problems that the animatronic didn't have before as it gets older and it's just so even good quality animatronics even if something's really good quality you're still going to have some units that don't work properly straight out of the box you're going to have some defective units when these are mass produced that's how it is it's it's not just with animatronics it's for anything like if you bought a fan you might have a fan that's just defective out of the box <laughs> i you know it, it can be applied to so many things not just these but these things most of these things are pretty bad and do a lot of these do have issues straight out of the box so i'm going over the top like 20 that have always been faulty even when they were brand new letting alone when as they a the, how, how they become faulty as they age letting alone that factory you see that you know the jammy items have split gears but when these animatronics are new and first come out you're not going to have a split motor shaft gear that's not a problem you're going to see until five to ten years after the animatronic has been you know five to ten years of the animatronic you know as, as it ages that's when you see that problem square shaft gears take a little longer because it's some thicker plastic but they can be broken if too much force is applied i've had that happen but oh that's not really a problem that's that you have in the beginning i'm talking about animatronics that have always been faulty straight out of the box brand new if an animatronic is very faulty when it's brand new the parts are completely fret plastic you know gets brittle as it gets older most things do latex deteriorates as it gets older well some of these animatronics were faulty from the start the plastic is as good as it can be but they still fail fresh out of the box if they're bad fresh out of the box when they're new they're gonna be three to ten times worse when they as they get older <laughs> You know it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse as they get older like there's going to come a point in time where the plastic on these is so brittle there's going to be no saving them you know a lot of them a lot of those are that you know how i say black plastic there's that really cheap black plastic that like it's like a potato chip you barely have to press it and it, it, it could shatter apart well when they first produced it it wasn't that fragile you know it was it still had a little bit of durability to it but as it aged sometimes it's chemical reaction um uh sometimes it's other things but just over time it just start becomes really brittle and falls apart that's just how this stuff works and yeah it's kind of hard to understand when you're when you haven't experienced this stuff for years but the fact you know i'm 20 basically 26 now and yeah, i've been collecting these halloween figures since 2004 i've experienced it i've seen what the stuff fall apart and so what what was once really good didn't have issues had issues later on you know so letting alone all those factors now getting into the topic of my top 20 of the top 20 most faulty animatronics from my experience when i classify something as faulty it's not like you know uh just because one doesn't work doesn't mean they're all faulty because like i said there's always going to be some in a batch that are not going to work properly um, but these are ones that pretty much every unit 
failed after some short amount of time. Now, not talking about lasting years, this is stuff, it could last a few minutes, a few hours, maybe a week. If, if, if something fails after a week or so, then it's classified as faulty. And if it's more than three units that are failing after this short amount of time, then, then that's when I classify it as something that's really faulty and yeah and again it's even some of these most faulty animatronics there are some cases where there are some good ones that have lasted longer but when there's more of them that don't last longer than there are ones that do last longer that's what I consider faulty now sometimes it can be the other way around where you know again like I said there's really good one something that is good quality you're still gonna come across some that don't work properly and they're they have issues and none of these things last about the same amount of time you know one unit can last a few days one some can last a few hours some can last five years some can last 10 years some can last 20 years you know it's never the same even if it's the same exact animatronic from the same year from the same factory batch it, it's all different but certain animatronics tend to have a certain lifespan and those are the ones that are on the very low like like my number like top five faulty those are the ones that tend to be the ones that they all have the issue they all seem to last almost the same amount of time it doesn't matter so now I'm going to finally get over. I just had to explain this a little bit because there's a lot of people that don't understand the fact that these things get weaker as they get older. They're not as good when they're older as when they, they were when they're new. So I want to explain that so people understand it a little better because not everyone knows what I know. So I got to explain for the people that don't know as much. Um, so number so originally I did uh, have Ghost Girl on the list from 2012, but when I thought about it more, it wasn't really a faulty animatronic that was broken out of the box or had it. Are the Ghost Girl at our? And I'm trying to be as open-minded as possible. I'm trying to you know, looking at different people's stores, like is this an animatronic that's broken in almost every single store video? Ghost Girl, no. She was, like, never broken during the Spirit Halloween season. But she, you know how I said, usually motor shaft gears usually take about 5 to 10 years to, until they start having the effect where they split. Well, Ghost Girl was actually has the record of that happening the fastest. Because in two, I had, I bought two Ghost Girls in 2012, and they the shaft gear both split late 2013. So just a year the gear had already split in the arm movement and there was another collector that i know that also had that issue now again there are a lot of units that did last five years or some that may be just giving out now but that's why i didn't really put her on the list i had her on the list but then i removed it because i was like well when it first came out it was good quality i remember the wind knocked one of mine over and nothing broke on it. It was sturdy. I, I like it was. It's very well built. The fans, mm -hmm. which I thought the fan, you know, I thought you know the arms were gonna pop easily when it first came out. I but it, they don't. Um, I've never had a fan blow out on mine yet. Some have, but mine never have. So I don't think it's like a a really really faulty animatronic. Yes, the gear ended up splitting only after a year, and that's why I wanted to put it on the list. But I tried to. And but it, I try. I kept it off the list just because it's not one of those ones that a lot of them were faulty, like right out of the box. And it's not a, one that ran into issues right away. So even though the gear split early on, it was still overall good quality. It's just I don't know. But what I did put on the list, and you know, this one was kind of weird. You know, Jemmy life sizes were typically good quality and stuff. And, um, sorry, people are spamming me like always. Um, what I did, what I did put on number, uh, oh yeah, I was saying I'm doing top 20, but 
I, I say again, I couldn't do a ten because there was way there is way more animatronics than ten that I can think about that were just really faulty out of the box and just had so many issues. Um, but the very top of the list, I would say, is the uh, 2010 H2 Michael Myers. Now I know a lot of people are like, but it was good quality and stuff, and it, but to be honest, it wasn't really because. The Rob Zombie Michael Myers, you know, there was once a time when this stuff was new. It was not old. And I was one of those people that got to see this stuff when it was new. You know, I've been looking at these Halloween product videos on YouTube since 2007. So when this stuff was new in 2007, 2009, to you know, it was new. I got, I got, I saw it everywhere. There was lots more, a lot more videos of this stuff on YouTube than what there is now. A lot of the, the sources for these animatronics are no longer on YouTube. A lot of the people that watch my videos now didn't even exist yet. Uh, there's a lot of videos that I have seen that I do remember. There's probably a lot that I don't remember, and there's a lot that a lot of you people will never ever see that I have seen. So. There was a lot more videos of Spirit Halloween 2010 and 2009 on YouTube when it was happening during that time. You know, just like now, there's a lot of videos of 2021 and all that. You know, yes, um, social media wasn't as big as it is now. You know, but there was still a handful of Spirit Halloween 2009 and 2010 videos. Rob Zombie Michael Myers was never broken in stores in any videos. But the H2O Michael Myers, all the videos that are still on YouTube, and I think a lot more that used to be on YouTube that are no longer on, there's almost hardly any videos of a H2O one that's working fully. Whether the head wasn't moving completely, like at my store, the head was like stuck to the side and it wouldn't really move. Now, I don't know if something was caught in the neck. I don't know. But the arm stopped moving eventually too. And I know I said that was likely a belt, and I know I excluded belts, but... It's weird because this was not really an issue that Jimmy had with their life sizes. It never happened with the Rob Zombie. It didn't even happen with the Freddy Krueger. For some reason, it was just the H2O Michael Myers that seemed to fail a lot in stores. You know, some of them did not move their bodies. The, their bodies didn't turn. But most of the time, it was the head that didn't move. And then later on, the arm would stop moving. So I just thought it was so odd for this animatronic to have a lot of issues like that because there's never been another Jemmy life-size animatronic that, especially from those older days, that had issues like that, like this has. Yeah, like I said, there's, you know, Jemmy life-size, like Jason Voorhees, there's some videos where the arm is snapped in the stores or, you know, you have some typical broken pieces, but... It was just weird that seeing a freshly new Michael Myers when it was new it have not work fully in so many separate different stores. I just think it's kind of weird. Anyways, um, <clears throat> the next one, I put this higher because it's not one that's really faulty and it can be redeemed. It's actually a newer animatronic. It's Mr. Dark. A lot of Mr. Dark's last year were faulty and had issues right out of the box. Mine was assembled around from factory. It couldn't go down all the way. So therefore the gears would strip. They they mixed metal and plastic gears together. The metal gears, as soon as... See, Mr. Dark worked if you didn't... If it didn't get jammed on anything. But as soon as something jams Mr. Dark's mechanism... Because they mixed metal and plastic gears, the metal will instantly strip the plastic teeth off those gears. And it's done for. Um, unless you can replace the gear, which not a lot of people can do. You know, it involves you know 3D printing or, you know, if you can make metal gears, which is much harder. <laughs> um, they're going to revamp. They've. It's been said the mech will be much better improved this year, so I don't know... As of now, I have not seen how it's improved or anything, but for the, a lot of these animatronics, uh, certain years are more faulty than other years, and this is one of those. Mr. Dark, the 2021 model, is considered faulty because of this issue. Like I said, mine was assembled wrong, so it couldn't reset fully, so therefore it would jam itself, and it, would, it stripped out the first time. The first time. 
So, you know, that was a bummer. Uh, I'm trying to, I'll try my best to show pictures of these things as I'm talking about them, especially for the older ones, since some of you are probably newer people into this scene and don't know some of the older animatronics. But Mr. Dark is pretty new, so everyone's going to know what it is as of now. But if you're watching this like 20 years later, maybe you probably won't know. <laughs> Unless this becomes one of those top sellers that Spirit brings back every single year. Which it could, but yeah. Um, anyway, so the next time I, I have these all in notes because I would not remember the order if I didn't. Um, so the next I have the... Oh, 2012 Rosemary. It's that specific year of Rosemary that tended to be more faulty than all. Rosemary sold from 2011 through 2014, but the 2012 model was the most faulty. Uh, 2011 had some issues, mostly with head tilting. Uh, Rosemary, sometimes there's like stopper pieces in the levers that break so the head will go down too far so it won't lift back up all the way. Um, but the 2012 models of Rosemary had a lot of issues revolving the lunging mechanism. Uh, I have three 2012 Rosemary's and they all suffer problems from the lunging mechanism. The store display, which our store display, which I have, um, had issues. Sometimes it would retract normally, sometimes it would retract really slow. It was off and on throughout the whole season and the whole time of me owning it. Sometimes it would lurch, sometimes it would not lurch. It was just very random and picky. Uh, we had another 2020, 2012 model in uh, 2013, which I had set up in the asylum. So we had two Rosemary set up at one point. It's the one with the squinted eyes. It's one that I also have. Uh, it never, It has never, ever lurched. I don't know if the motor is just dead. I remember I opened up the, the base and I was like, it looks like there's wires cut. It was returned because when I took this out of the box, it was not twist tied into the box. So somebody had returned this one. So I was like, well, it looks like there's wires cut, but yeah, I don't know. It, it just never works. So it's hard to say. But this one I got off Harrison last year. This is my newest Rosemary. And, um... Uh, it has an issue with the lunging. It does not retract. The motor is dead. So a lot of the 2012 Rosemary's just suffer a lot of issues. Um, a lot of them also had issues where that when the head bended up and down, the gears would click because they would slip. The R2012 store display has always done that. From the moment it was first set up, it has always clicked when its head went up and down. It just slips. It always has. And it's always had an issue where the head would only look one direction and not really the other direction. I think there was like cloth and stuff that got caught. It started working later, but then it stopped again because stuff got caught in the... There's Sometimes the hair can get caught in the head turning or the fabric around the neck can get caught where it turns. And they, they, it can like start breaking into strings and then get wrapped in the mech that way. And I think that's what happened to it, but that's why I put, but Rosemary overall, 2014 one was not too faulty. There were still a lot of models that worked, so it was one of those animatronics that not every model was really faulty. Almost none of them work now because of the fact that they're over 10 years old, like I just said. So excluding that, Rosemary still, that's why she's not on the lower part of the list. They still work decently well. Um... 2010 lurching vampire well i've i've said i've mentioned this many times the one at our store it was it my very first time going to spirit halloween was 2010 and i recorded lurching vampire on opening day i had been there to i was there i think four hours they did not have all their stuff setting up set up they were setting up lurching vampire when i went to the store and when I was filming the part three of that video, they had just brought it out. And four activa after four activations, its pull had snapped. Um, now, they did not have the, uh, the uh, support cable connected to the back weight. It's what pulls its head back when it lurches. That was a support. That was the, the purpose of that cable was to support the poles. They didn't have it connected. Um, 
So therefore, it and, and the poles were twist lock into place, and it it cr it cut it created a split in the pole, and it's top heavy, and it broke down here. So it it snapped the pole, it split, and it collapsed. Um, I think a lot of I think that happened with a lot of allergy and vampires. Like if you did not use it, happened with Donovan's when I was at his place. I didn't connect the support. It snapped on the second try. So 2010 allergy and vampire was just really, really, really bad quality with its poles. Um. Yeah, it. Just, but the tw they revamped it in 2011. They, it was uh, they changed the pole structure. It was snapped lock. It was like bulletproof. Like I didn't really use the the cable on my 2011 Lurching Vampire ever, and it lasted me years. The poles have never snapped. In fact, that's the one thing that hasn't broke on that Lurching Vampire. It's 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 suffered a lot of issues since it's so old, but it lasted me years and. Uh, I didn't even, you know, they. It even has some support poles. When the lurching vampire lurches, the poles hit the floor, so it doesn't put strain on the poles with that sudden movement. I removed those on my lurching vampire in later 2011, so there was nothing supporting it. There was nothing supporting it from the back or the front, and it never snapped ever. It put strain on the motor, which is what eventually let led to the motor probably giving out and dying for the retracting but uh yeah that 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 pole never snapped there's and i remember for years i thought it was gonna snap because my la my vampire would lean a lot never snapped but the 2010 ones they they don't stand a chance working you know these snap without the uh cable attached now imagine them without the support poles that support it from the front removing those yeah, like I said, Donovan snapped after two tries, and well, you know, it's it, that was 2019. It was pretty, it was pretty old at that point. So at that point, at that point, the plastic would become brittle and not be as sturdy. But the fact that the one that I recorded at the store was brand new, you know, it was just released, brand new out of the box. For the fact that it broke after four tries, you know, it snapped after four. That just shows it's it was not very good quality um now the next one i have on the list is resurrection mary um she uh worked as lawn as the the problem with her is she had lawn hair and it spun her head oh yeah i gotta show it um but she had lawn hair and the she spun her head 360 and then it would spin back but the hair would get stuck in the would get caught in the gears or where it spins and as soon as that happens it's done you gotta you gotta take it apart which nobody did um and this i think this happened with every resurrection mary is one of the hardest spirit animatronics to find now and it's i'm sure it's for that reason because almost every i think almost every resurrection mary ended up getting his hair cut and at that point people back then would just throw these things away they wouldn't save them as a static as much you know people didn't care about these things as much back then as they do now so it became useless to a lot of people once that happened that was, her head spinning was her key she lays down and pops up that was her key feature and so once that happens it's almost pointless so people just didn't really hold on to it once that happened Uh. So yeah, this is a uh, Resurrection Mary. Now they did, you know, they did cut the hair. Now the Exorcist from 2011 did suffer this, but it wasn't. It didn't happen as often because with the Exorcist, at least her hair was above where it spins but the one that i have was a store display and the hair did end up getting stuck where the head spins it got in the gears and wrecked the mechanism um the thing with the the hair that they use on these props is that it starts out all nice but over time it gets 
with all the static and you know leaves get stuck in their hair the, the the hair starts stretching out it gets all poofy and goes everywhere it eventually makes its way down into where they spin but luckily with the exorcist you can probably stop the problem before it happens because when you trim the hair it doesn't look so bad but with resurrection mary they released it the next year with shorter hair that was above shoulder length and it looked stupid but that's because we were introduced to the prop originally with long hair if they would have just released it with short hair to begin with we wouldn't have known the difference really because it there wouldn't have been another model but because we were used to seeing it with long hair well for me I thought the second version looked stupid. I don't like Resurrection Mary with long hair. Unfortunately, that was that's really the only fix you can do with an animatronic like that. Um, and but what made it more stupid is they took out the light up face and the head. And uh, you know, people didn't like the, a lot of people didn't like the light up face in the original model to begin with. But I did. I liked the way the face glowed red in the dark. I thought that looked really cool. But a lot of people didn't like it, so Techie removed the light and cut the hair, which is what the problem was with the animatronic. Now, going on to the next animatronic, 2010 Demonica. Um, she had lots of issues when she was brand new. Um, see, with the the problem that usually happened first was the belt would wear out, and there was a cable when she when she would rise all the way up the cable was tied to a certain length so when she was all the way up it would pull her head back but that was too much strain for that belt and it would wear it out but what made the reason why that made it so why it was so faulty is because it relied on the relay switch to function properly um so Um, basically, a relay switch is a uh, component that stops a motor from running once it's hit. There'll, there will be a plastic piece that hits the relay switch that will stop, that will tell the motor to stop moving. Or it can activate an additional feature, which in Demonica's case, that's what the purpose for this relay switch kind of was. The, her rising up, she had to rise up all the way and hit that relay switch for her animation to continue. she If she didn't hit her relay switch, she would not move her head. She would not continue to go up and down. She Her motor would keep would run the whole activation. It would start to get hot, and eventually it caused components on the board to overheat, and which later caused two circuitry issues where she wouldn't want to rise at all. There's a lot of uh, demonicas that were in stores where only her eyes are glowing and she's not even trying to rise at all that's why because her belt had worn out it's it had constantly it, its motor was constantly running and running and running it was getting overheated and it blew out a component that would allow her to and because she's not hitting her relay switch now her head's not going to move either because that's the only way her head moves is being activated by that relay switch so that's what made her so faulty. The 2011 model that was remade was nowhere near as faulty as that 2010 model. She didn't move as much, which is what made her a lot less faulty. She didn't have a cable that pulled her head back. It had an actual mechanism with, you know, a gearbox and levers that tilted the head back. And it was not, it did not rely on relay switches to function. My uh, 2011 Demonica for years, the relay switch you know had broken but it didn't affect it in any way it only caused the motor to run a few extra seconds but they programmed the 2011 demonica to not continuously make the motor run the whole time um it was actually programmed it didn't need the relay switch to continue its head movement features or any of that it it was just be overall better programmed you know, the, the 2010 model was just horrible when it came to how they programmed it. And that's what made it so faulty. Um, 2011 one, yeah, it's, again, it, it, it's nowhere near as faulty. The 2010 one is still was still cooler because of how fast. It moved so much faster. It was more jerky and freaky looking as it moved. 
but it was just so faulty because of how they programmed it and uh, the 2011 one just did not suffer major issues like the 20 uh, the, like the 2010 model did so and to me the the coloring of between the two were completely different so to me they're not even almost the same prop they're to me they're like complete two completely different props there's so many differences between the two that i feel like they're not even really relatable to each other at all <laughs> so anyways moving on to the next would be gravedigger from 2011 now gravedigger to me actually was actually the faultiest of 2011 because a lot of the animatronics were actually kind of good quality in 2011. A lot of the animatronics worked very well. 2011 was the year that Spirit took Techie, uh, spe specifically, really took a huge step with their animation because years prior, their animatronics only did one or two, one or two movements, but now this year, Techie had introduced animatronics that had a fully moving head with a moving mouth and much other additional features, you know, Gravedigger being one of them, Rosemary, Harvester. But uh, Gravedigger, unfortunately, was the faultiest of the 2011 season from my experience because, uh, well, I kind of, I kind of don't understand why because the harv it has the exact same animation as the Harvester with an additional moving arm. But for some reason, Gravedigger was so much more faulty than Harvester. As a matter of fact, Harvester was probably one of the best less lasting animatronics of 2011. I still have my original Harvester from 2011 that has never had any mechanical issues. Sometimes the speaker cuts out and I have to tap it. But other than that, never had any mechanical issues. I have another 2011 Harvester that I got off eBay in 2017. It's still, it's been used a lot. It's been used in our display every single year since then for two nights every year. So about 12 hours each year. Still fully works. But for some reason, Gravedigger, some of them would not move their head side to side. Some of them would not lift their heads. Some of them would not have pointing arms. Um, they, For some reason, there was, there was a lot of Gravediggers that just would never fully work there was something that would be wrong with them or something that would go wrong within a short period of time. Um, for me, I haven't had very good luck with Gravedigger. Uh, well, he, the way that he, his design was executed was not good. He has this small, this is basically his base with you know just the top this is his whole base it's a six foot animatronic very top heavy you know it had plastic pull the plastic the poles are very sturdy for being plastic on this animatronic but it had a it had a sandbag weight that you slip over the poles but that didn't do anything gravedigger when you display him outside there is almost nothing that can support this thing properly. You can put as much weight on this on the base as you want, but nothing keeps this thing from falling over if the wind is too bad. Unlike a lot of other animatronics now that just have a flat metal base which you can stake down and at and you, they they won't go anywhere. I mean, it could snap some welding off, but the base is not going to go flying. This thing again, doesn't matter if you tie it down or put a bunch of brick. There was no room to put bricks on it that was the main problem there was not enough room to put weight on it so it would always fall over it was top heavy it would always fall the base was not wide enough it was too thick it wasn't the base is not thin so it 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 just it yeah there it just didn't work you know it was executed it was horrible so my the wind knocked over my grave digger in 2011 broke a head lever and a it broke a gear that moved the head up and down um my second grave digger that i got well i've had three grave diggers my first one had a rip in the mouth so it the mouth wasn't glued to the mouth so it didn't move so i took it back um and got a different one and then uh the one i got on, off ebay in 2018 um 
it's still it no matter how much I weight I put on it it would always get it would always knock over it's uh it, it has a little pole in the head that got that got you know the glue it wasn't glued good enough so it broke off so we, I had to open the head and re-glue that down um and then just last year I used the base from my original grave digger on it it ended up completely shattering and it fell over and it snapped off its pole now it's just if they ever bring this animatronic back which they can and they should you know techie has gotten a lot better you know they use those wide flat bases now if they brought them back that's what they could do with it and it wouldn't have these problems it would be sturdy you it would the wind wouldn't affect it as much if they gave it that metal base that all the animatronics have now the board was in the base of these old of this old model so if it gets wet then it's also ruined whereas now the boards are usually in the body so and you could have a pole going up both legs whereas this grave digger was just the whole bot this the whole body was pre-assembled like you know there was only one pole going up up his whole body so if they remade it now it would have a pole going up each leg with that regular rectangular wired base that every animatronic has now and that would do the trick that would fix it that would fix all the problems that gravedigger had and then his gloves deteriorated over time but they're latex that's what happens to latex all right i've talked about him for a while i'm sorry i didn't i don't mean to ramble on so much about these props but when you ask me about the most faulty animatronics and when i have to explain why they're faulty i ramble on about this so this is what you got to expect <laughs> and i hope you enjoy it because i don't want to be saying this stuff for nothing but <laughs> um the next one on the list is coat rack monster from 2014 now it's a good animatronic it's actually one of the, i think it's one of the coolest and unique ideas for a jump scare animatronic that has ever been created unfortunately it's like grave digger it's so cheaply made um this is an animatronic that you know there's not going to be a lot that didn't suffer issues um there's some people that have owned Korak all this time and it still works but you haven't you probably haven't used it a lot though but you don't this is an, anim an animatronic that you don't have to use a lot for it for it to break this is an animatronic that if you own this i would get a step hat or a limit how much you activate this because every time it activates it it activates is one less time it's going to work um now we went through two store displays of the well the first store display the common problem with him is that the piece that hits the relay switch falls out and then his head and arms will continuously to pop up it will typically pop up three times instead of one time it will not be in sync since there's no signal telling the motor to stop like i said that's what relay switches are intended to do um, it will continuously pop up like three to four four times per activation now instead of one time which lead which makes it more destructive for the mechanism um the head is a literally literally a cheap plastic pole with a lever for the hat or whatever i it's it's very it's a very cheap plastic pole in the head that pops up it's kind of like a rising from the grave but a more small scaled pole and it snaps after a while and i've had this happen with more than one of them actually three of them our store display a lot of them actually kind of pissed me off because the hats a lot of the time would be covering the would be too far forward they would be covering the face so you couldn't see the face fully the eyes would always be covered by the hat now there were some models that weren't like that but there were a lot of models that were and that made me so mad um but yeah but i've had three i've had three of them where that relay switch falls out of place it happened with our first star display in 2000 14 and the head ended up snapping as a result to that we had one in 2015 which lucas had originally bought in 2015 and then they returned it because the adapter broke so he just got a different one instead um but i ended up 
rebuying that one that they returned because it worked better than the other two that I, that I had bought. My first one had that issue where the hat covered the face and I didn't like it. And then I got our second store display from 2014, which <coughs> worked okay at first. It worked better than our first one, but it's it got weaker over time. But um, but then the one that was returned in 20 that they returned in 2015, same. It worked better out of all the previous ones that I had seen. And the relay switch piece fell out, leading the head to snap eventually and then we had one in 2016 which we set up in our the hotel <coughs> when we sold the clown the evil clown or the axe zombie um and same thing happened it worked it worked better than all the other ones that i had but the relay switch piece fell out so it would continue to pop up and then it's and then the head snapped so again three of them suffered that issue it's happened to a lot of them it's a faulty animatronic <coughs> it just doesn't hold up and last it's one of those animatronics that you gotta limit how much it it activates you can't over activate it um, because yeah it's just not gonna last you if you do all right the next one I have on the list is Jackal Lunger. Um, Jackal Lunger is also from 2014. Uh, now, note this: uh, 2010 and 2014 are Spirit Halloween's most, and 2019 are Spirit Halloween's most faulty years for animatronics. And this is with a majority of the companies, but tech, mostly techie for 2010 and 14. Uh, so Jack O'Lunger is a uh, was a lurching animatronic, and I mean, th so, uh, a few of them worked out, you know, well during the time. But it's one of those ones that you can't find fully working now. You have to re repair them. Which this is one of the animatronics that are probably the hardest to repair of all the animatronics because. The way its arm mechanism is, is insane. It is so... I can't explain it. I've made a video. I couldn't fix mine. The, the the gear split for the arm retracting on mine, and I can't even get into it. Now, the store display models were uh, actually... The store display models, I think, are unrepairable because they were... They put so many staples in the arms to where you couldn't get it apart all the way. It they they modify. Techie used to send modified store displays that were built a little bit differently. They were like always halfway assembled, so you didn't have to assemble everything, and uh, they were a little bit modified to be more sturdy, but making it harder to get inside of. In in this case. I can't. I was not able to get into Jack Lunger and fix him. He was so put together and just. It's just not. You're not able to get inside of it and repair it. Um, other people who have bought one that wasn't a store display were able to repair theirs, but I wasn't able to repair mine. Um, there was nothing. I, I tried everything. There was nothing I could do to get it apart. But anyways, it ended up being really faulty with the arm lurching because the spring force in his it the spring pushes the arms out and lifts the head up so the spring force in it is so strong that it leads to gear the the square shaft gear to break pretty quickly um one of the first one i set up at the store was not a store display we didn't have the store display one in yet so i took one out of the regular box to set up and it started smoking. It didn't reach. It wouldn't retract. The body wouldn't retract, and it started smoking. You know, it's one one of those components were overheating. We were shorting out and overheating, and it started smoking. So, it was defective right out of the box. And then this, the the when the store display came in, I set it up. It lasted a while, but then the relay switch for the body lurching stopped working, so it would continuously lurch. And eventually a belt wore out, and I didn't bother fixing it. Oh, well, actually, I did try to fix it, and for some reason the relay switch still wouldn't work. 
I think the relay switch was just completely broken. It was a lot of these lurching animatronics. The relay switch piece will slide out of place, and all you have to do is push it back in place. That wasn't the case with this one. Um, and then there was one with a customer returned where the relay switch piece in the arms wouldn't work, so his arms would sit there, click and twitch. And uh, again, the body is not easy to get into, so I didn't bother trying to fix that. Mine ended up working because I took, since the arms and all that still worked from the store display and the lurching part worked from the one that the customer returned, when I bought it, I uh, I had I told asked my boss if I could do this too. This was the end of the season. It was the 50% off sale. I was like, can I swap the body? He let me do it, so that's how I made a fully working unit. Otherwise, it would not have been fully working. And now, and in 2017, the it the square shaft gear for the arm split in mine, and yeah, now it's fried. But <laughs> yeah, it was just it was I see. I think it's a great it's great detail on this animatronic, but it but it had its fair share of issues when it was new, you know. All right, so the next one is gruesome granny uh she's from 2013 she's one of my top favorite animatronics which i will be doing a video about that too since i always get questions on what my top spirit animatronics always are um and i've made videos before but people i still get asked all the time what my stuff so i but i feel like i should just make a newer video so gruesome granny is one of the faultiest of 2013 and it's sad because she's one of my fa top favorites of all time she's my top favorite because of her animation and how she looks around while she's singing it's just so creepy I, I just i love it though but anyways what makes her so faulty the, the main problem this one has is the head tilt the way techie designed the wires for this was is horrible they have the wires you know the wires lead to the board which is in the back and they lead up to her head now when they made gravedigger and harvester those animatronics tilt their head up and down but the wires weren't being pulled because they they did the mechanism right so it, it did they didn't they weren't faulty in that way but gruesome granny her head tilt design was different her whole mechanism was in her head and tilted and when her head tilts it pulls the wire so when her head tilts it pulls the wire off after you know they they maybe lasted a week or so they didn't all you know my original gruesome granny lasted me quite a while but it ended up it, it eventually ended up happening my second gruesome granny which again lasted a while eventually ended up happening we've had two we had we went through two store displays uh the first one i set up there was a gear that broke in the rocking it broke straight out of the box it, the rocking wasn't really that faulty on these actually it was always it typically was always the belt that ended up breaking but there was times where a gear got chipped for the rocking and it would end up doing its twitching it would twitch you know there were so that was an issue that happened sometimes but it wasn't the most common issue the most common issue like i said was the head tilt and that um so when i replaced that one that broke straight out of the box i set up a different one which the head tilt ended up the wire pulled off on that one um uh a few days later and so the what I once that one broke we had another broken one in the back but this one's rocking was broken and this one's head tilt wasn't working so what I did was I took the body from that one because the head t tilt still worked on that one and put it on that one so now this one in the back is a fully broken one the head tilt doesn't work and it doesn't rock well I found some extra gears at home and I put a new gear in it and it rocked but I didn't fix the head tilt because you know once you get the head up I feel like it doesn't it's not too bad like if the white when the wire pulls off when the head's in the down position and when it turns its head it doesn't look right but when it's 
but when you get the head in the up position and if you don't reattach the wire it, it doesn't affect it too bad it doesn't look too bad but uh on the 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 one that I swapped the body with, eventually the wire came off in that one too. And I can't tell you how many times I soldered that wire back on its head, but it always came off. It would always come off every single day, every two days, every not even every day. It was like sometimes it was twice a day. I was constantly soldering that wire back on. I was even trying to extend the wire and make it a little longer. It would still come off. And this is the same thing that's been happening happening to my two gruesome grannies the wire constantly pulls off the head tilt um there's also a gear that usually strips out in the mouth movement because the mask is fit on so tight that the mouth can barely move um so it ends up stripping a gear out uh, chipping a gear tooth off and it starts making a really loud grinding noise um so yeah She's overall just very faulty, and it's really unfortunate because, again, she is a top favorite of mine. Um, but, yeah, she she breaks in pretty much every animation. You know, it, there is a lot of times where even that the, the head turning, um, it, it it's twitchy and jittery like it's about to give out. It, it it's, just, it's just not designed well. It's not fluent. It's very tacky. It's all lazily constructed. It just... You know, it was just not designed well. It was it it was one of the faulty animatronic faultiest of an, besides the pop up zombie, which is kind of later down the list. She was the faultiest of 2013, and she was the most animated of 2013. Which you know, some of the some of the the more animation they have, the more faulty they're gonna end up being. But there's some animatronics that like Harvester, which does have a lot of animation and. It ended up not being so faulty so it just depends on how it's designed how the wire like I said how the wires are placed if it's being yanked while the heads moving so a lot of times on these techie products their their wires will be literally zip tied to the shoulders with no extension they'll be yanking they'll have it zip tied while it's you know while there's tension and eventually it's it pulls off they need to before they zip tie it, extend it, you know, so that, you know, it, you've got some flexibility, and then zip tie it if they're going to do that. That's There's another animatronic that suffers this issue that's not by Techie, a different company that I'll talk about later on down this list. Next one is Broken Spine Girl. Broken Spine Girl was another animatronic that was broken almost all the time in stores, but... It it was more broken if people... The reason why she was mostly broken is because a lot of people pulled on her. Because, she, you know, she bends back. She has long hair. People always think they have to mess with the hair on animatronics and pull it. Because I don't know why, but they do. People have a habit of some sort for pulling on prop hair. Especially when it's something that lifts up and down. And, that, and, and in that case, that's why one of them broke at our stores. That's what broke it once. Um... But it was still a fairly faulty animatronic oh, set aside from that. Um, if you didn't have the arms posed in the L shape, if you had it posed to the... Sh she drops really fast, but she can't... There's no counterweight. She she struggles. Her gears are... She's completely plastic. Uh, very, you know... And, a, and w a design like that where her whole body... Half her whole body is supposed to flip backwards... That needs as much support as it can get. And plastic move plastic being used to control that is not gonna work very well and it's not gonna last very long. You know, at that route you probably wanna go with some reindeer motors or like, you know, yeah metal, <laughs> not plastic. But they went with plastic as they typically do, and it just was very faulty. It had lots of animation, head turn, mouth move, body bend. Uh, the gear teeth were always getting chipped by being pulled. Um, mouth breaks on her a lot. She, I, I've made a video saying upper jaw movement breaks a lot. She is one techie animatronic that has an upper jaw movement. And her mouth ends up breaking. And actually, I literally have a piece literally right here from mine. The mouth on mine just broke last season. 
uh, the and it's not a gear like Gruesome Granny. It's literally the mouthpieces that snap. Well, it was sitting up here, but I can't find it. But yeah. Um, so the mouth, uh, the head barely turns at all either. There's a lot of a lot of the ones I've seen have barely turned their head at all. She isn't programmed to move her hair, her head very much. Especially with the relay switch design, it's moved to just move a little bit. But sometimes the head is a little loose, so then it doesn't move at all. Uh, when it's, yeah, uh, she actually moves her head so much more when her uh, relay switch, if her the relay switches in her head movement are not working, she could actually do a three sixty if no stopper pieces are there. Um, but her main problem was her back bending. As you would expect, um, one of the the second one I set up after the first one, I don't remember what caused our first store display to broke. I don't know if it was pulled on or, I, you know, like I said, if the arms were which, it was kind of my fault that some of them broke because I did have the arms placed right at the shoulders so that she would drop down fast. I didn't really know that it was gonna really affect it a lot, but looking back at the videos, you can see they struggle a bit to get back up when it is that way. But, um, the second one that I set up, the relay switch was not right on the second one, straight out of the box. It, it was, the relay switch was bent too much, so when it would bend back, it wouldn't hit the relay switch. So the motor would continuously run, and with the plastic gears, it would, it eventually snap the gear tooth off. With that constant force of the motor trying to constantly move it down when it's already down. Um... It just ended up breaking, but I used parts from the first one that broke because it was a different gear that broke in the first one. So I ended up getting this one working again, and it, I still had the arms like this close to the shoulders, but it were it was working perfectly fine. It didn't have issues. But then once some stupid cu teenager, when it was lifting back up, I heard it. I I was just I was walking by. I was just looking away when I heard. <laughs> I, I saw his arm, I saw him pull on the hair, I heard the click, and I was like, <laughs> he did it, and that's what did it. <laughs> and I've owned a broken, I bought one, we had two broken spine girls that were returned, so we had a total of four broken, broken spine girls in our store. I think we only sold one that season, if we did, if that wasn't one that, I don't know if we had five or four in total, but we had four broken spine girls in the back. Uh, that were all broken. They all had a broken gear. One of them had the cl the clamps that you attach to, to support it were snapped off. Now that was probably the customer, you know, just pulling it off. And But one of them, the volume knob didn't work on. The volume knobs were very bad on these 2013 and 14 animatronics as well. A lot of the volumes did not work on them as well. Um, but, yeah, they were, they were just so faulty. Uh, I ended up buying the body from my yeah the body and the whole thing of the body of mine was ta was one of the return ones because the mouth still moved and the head worked the other one like the customer had braided its hair a little bit and i didn't want that one and i was the one that had the volume issues so i took one of the bodies and then the uh i techie did send me two they messed up actually. They were only supposed to send me one. They sent me two extra modules for her. So I put the module on and it worked great. Uh, it But the, the square shaft gear ended up breaking in the first module in 27, 2017. And then I replaced it with the second module which just the relay switch for the back bending ended up breaking on the second one which caused a gear to tooth to break off which so she wouldn't bend back all the way she would twitch because it broke a gear tooth off so it wouldn't uh, grip on to the gear right but eventually it stopped tilting back completely because it broke more uh so and that broke in uh 2020 i think but it officially stopped lifting back up and all that in last year 2021 so now I uh, I have ordered uh, some parts from Skull Crane and I'm waiting for them to arrive to fix it. But she's not a lasting animatronic by any means. She's she will never ever be a prop that will last you without repairs or anything like that. She's always gonna have issues no matter what. She's always 
you, if you break, if you fix or replace a certain part, part, it's gonna break again, eventually. So menacing Molly wasn't even as faulty as she was, but her gears were her plastic quality and everything was just so bad. Ugh. Okay, so moving on to the next one is my light's still on. Okay. Next one is. Uh, Grave Mourner. Now, I don't know if this one should be as, as, like, now, this is getting to, like, the top, like, 8 or 6 era. This is, like, the low, the ones that are supposed to be more faulty than the previous ones that I've talked about. But, Grave Mourner is not faulty mechanically, but she, it's, again, it's some, the pull, it's the pull. She to me is a it was one of the most faulty of 2012 I'd say probably I have another prop from uh, 2012 on this list that I think is more faulty than her but I think she breaks just as much if not more because of that specific piece the the pole where that clear piece that great now she was an animatronic from 2012 like I said uh, she was like John Doe she laid down and then she, her body twisted around to reveal her face. And her mechanism that twists her around is in the head. Her head is heavy. It weighs a lot. So it having a singular pole, the pole itself is very sturdy. But where it connects is its weak and brittle point. They uh, used a weak plastic that the pole inserts to. It's a it's clear. It was a clear plastic insert, and she's very very top heavy. She's like I swear she it's like ten pounds. So when she's laying down, it's a lot of weight. All that it took for my grave mourner to break in 2012, I was moving limb ripper in the room. I bumped into her arm just a little bit. She snapped. That that's all it took. Our store display ended up snapping. Now, this could have been someone punching it. You know, it happens with store displays. But it may not have, though. It might have just given out because it's just heavy. Remember, this is this was brand new at the time. This was just released. Remember how I said plastic gets more brittle over time? This is brand new, and it was already breaking. Um, so, <laughs> it it's, you know, you... Graymore is an animatronic you never see for sale any, anywhere ever, and I think it's because of that reason. I, I don't think anyone has a functional grave mourner anymore because of that piece breaking. We had a leftover in 2013 that I set up by the entrance of our store. It was up for about four weeks, maybe a month, yeah, about a month or so, but it, there came a point where the owner told me to take all those front ones down except for the jumping spiders that I had set up by each store because... You know, they scared people. They worked. Um, but all those extra props that I had set up in the front, chain to the grave, all those extra ones, I was told to take them down. So, you know, I was letting it reset. You know, it it hit my leg. It was going down. Its elbow touched my leg, and it snapped. That's all it took. Just very little. Just that very... Yeah, it, it, it just it snapped just like that. It ended up getting tossed thrown out so we couldn't sell it anymore at that point and I was just I was just taking it down so that we could you know put it back in the box and sell it we couldn't sell it we ended up throwing it out now because now it snapped uh, so yeah that's the, the, the one we set up at the store though the, it stopped twisting her body around after two to three days of opening the belt had you know how I said you're always gonna have animatronics that will need a belt replacing well my grave mourner has never needed her belt replaced it in the twisting but the store display one it the belt came off after two three days of opening <laughs> and it actually ended up frying the feature that twist her body around because we eventually ended up getting a new body for it later in the season and the motor wouldn't work for it because the component that controls the motor to spin around blew out because it overheated from the motor constantly spinning from not moving because the relay switches weren't getting hit yeah 
relay switches and belts and all these parts moving plays a big part in these animatronics when it comes to circuitry you know when it once a belt comes off and that motor is buzzing you really cannot use it unless you replace that belt because if you let it go and let that motor just buzz and spin it's gonna overheat and blow out that feature on the board the component that controls that feature okay so moving on to the next one is I put uh, this two I put up for this one I would say 2019 Pennywise and Jack Straw they both had fair share of issues in uh, 2019 now the Pennywise that's they are sold in 2021 and 2022 are not very faulty they're much much better but like the Lurching Vampire and the first model of Demonica the 2019 model of Pennywise was just horrible quality it was always broken like there were so many issues with it um our alex lore he went through five of them they all broke within a matter of minutes to days you know the one at our store well someone else set it up i didn't set it up so they kind of like messed it up they had a wire pulled off but on it for the relay switch which caused issues in the gearbox um, by the time by the time I had fixed it, there was a gear in the gearbox that was already messed up. When it was trying to reset, it would reset super slow, and you'd hear a ticking sound coming from the gearbox. So one of the gears was already messed up. Um, the welding ended up breaking on the base for mine. That wasn't a typical issue that happened with a lot of them, but uh, they had a lot of mechanical issues. There was a lot of them that would click and not reset at all. It was very very quiet like it was just a it was just horrible I, it looked amazing it, the 2019 model looked the best out of all the 2020 model was my least favorite it didn't look as good the 2021 and 2022 models looked better than the 2020 model in my opinion the 2020 model they gave it super weak screen so it didn't pop up very fast but it didn't really have any mechanical issues Besides the springs just being bad, that was the only really problem that it had. Uh, but 2019, it looked better. It had really bulky clothes. It was the most detailed. Its hair, well, its hair got messed up. The, the hair gets messed up on all of them after a while, just like the hair on these things. After a while, the hair loses its form. It starts turning into an afro, and it it starts looking bad. But Overall, the 2019 model looked the best cosmetically. It had the best quality outfit. It was very bulky. It was, it looked huge. The 2020 model looked so small compared to the 20, 2019 model because the the clothing was so thinned out compared to the 2019 model and all that. So I the 2019 model again looks the best, but it wasn't the best. Uh, well, function, function, functionality wise if that's a word but yeah this is the every, the Pennywise is still available to buy on the website so it's not like a really old animatronic that people might be confused on what I'm talking about <laughs> but yeah and I put Jack Straw on with it because it's another it's made by Crazy Create and Jack Straw in 2019 had a lot of issues mostly with the relay switch the the relay there were the stopper for the relay switch would like break or something so it would go all the way down and start clicking and eventually lead to gear failure which is what happened which is the reason why ours broke just last year because uh in 2019 it worked perfectly fine but in 2020 the wires for the relay switch came off and when i took it home to fix it it started working normally again because the wires were you know still semi touching the relay switch so it so then i you know put it back in the unit i didn't do any fixes on it uh 2020 uh 2020 then but when i used it on the display it was having the issues again it would go all the way down and start clicking and stuff so last year early 2021 i brought it home again fixed it saw that all the wires on the relay switch were off um and so i uh, i fixed it and it worked for a little bit, but after a while, the gears started failing, similar to my Mr. Dark. It would go down a little bit, but then start clicking and just sit there. 
and that's what it does every time. I have a new gear coming from Skull, Cran Skull Crane for that, so hopefully we get it working this year. But the relay switch thing leaded to gear failure later on. Uh, so yeah, here was another faulty one. Our display was up the whole 2019 for most of the whole 2019 season. It didn't really it. Well, funny, it had issues the first day opening with the relay switch. But surprisingly, it was just the wire harness that came halfway unplugged. So once I plugged it back in, it had no more problems the rest of the season. It lasted the whole season. 2020 models of Jack Straw did, were not faulty at all. They actually worked very well. So, uh, yeah, just the 2019 model of Jack Straw was faulty. Like the first model, Lurching Vampire, Demonica, Pennywise. The first models are always so faulty. Um, the next one on the list I have is the 2018 Michael Myers. Uh, it was a cool animatronic, it, but it's one of the more faulty ones that had, that were known to be more, you know, have a lot of issues because, uh, it had an issue where it would start smoking, you know, a component, electronical component in the board would blow up and start smoking, causing a feature to not, usually it was the arm movement, the arm movement, it would stop working and it was a, it was that board issue, uh. I don't know if it was because sometimes this happens because a motor is malfunctioning or shorting out. The contacts on the motor can be touching each other, which that should not happen. If it, if the contacts on the motor are touching improperly, it will cause that to happen. But seeing as it's just an arm movement, I don't think that should happen. A lot of these Michael Myers were doing this fresh out of the box. Uh, I know a person that paid $700 for one on eBay that was supposedly brand new in box. And it was working fine, but once he plugged the battery adapter into it, it started smoking. It shot smoke out of it. It fried the audio. It fried the body turn. It w That's the one that was sent to Skull Crane that just got, you know, he downloaded the uh, uh, audio on a programmable chip, you know, in an MP3 type file. And was it was just wired to go continuously. There was no programming with it or anything, because the board was so burned up, it was impossible to repair. And this happened, unfortunately, with this Michael Myers. It wasn't a case where it happened with just a few of them. It was more than half of them, unfortunately. Uh, it happened with Jaden's. Luckily, surprise. Usually, I'm the one that runs into like animatronic failures. My my Michael Myers has not suffered this issue and so i think there are some that don't do this but there are not a lot of them from what i'm aware and it maybe it's only a matter of time now before mine does end up doing this but yeah my, i like i've used it every year in our display i've used mine on continuous mode in 2018 2019 and i think 2020 i used it on continuous mode again our display is two nights uh, we start at about five five o'clock and go till about ten thirty at night. So we get about six hours a day. So it's had it gets twelve. Like I said, it gets twelve hours of play each year, and this has been four seasons now. You know, multiply twelve times eight or six. You can do six times eight or twelve times four. And that tells you how many hours my Michael Myers has been used for, and it has not suffered any problems yet. But it's not even just the components that blow out in the Michael Myers. We actually went through four displays at our store, not because they were necessarily faulty. Our first one we set up sold within a week or two of being up. Some We sold out of them, and someone ended up buying the store display. Um... Then we got a new shipment of them in, and I set up another one, which was the one that had the arm. The, the hand was zip-tied backwards on the arm, so it looked like this. <laughs> um, you, we tried posing it better, but that one didn't have any problems. That one did, well, someone bought, we, ha we ended up getting two in that shipment. We set one up. There was one for a customer to buy. Someone bought that one, took it home. It shorted out. It had that. It did that smoking thing for the arm. They returned it in exchange for our store display, and we we ended up swapping. They we ended up swapping the arm out so that they had an arm that looked right, <laughs> and uh, 
and we ended up putting that fried one on display so it just turned its body with no arm movement which looked so stupid I hated it um, and eventually the motor for the body turn died and I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where the body turn is not working on the Michael Myers I've seen videos where a lot of videos where the arm isn't moving I've seen a lot of videos where the body isn't moving and I've seen some videos where they are not moving at all it's just the body the bo music playing I mean you know the the motor and the body turn ended up dying on the one that was returned that had the board issue and then we 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 ended up eventually taking it down and setting up another one when we got another shipment of them we had I think we ended up getting four more in and we had, we set up another one and that one's body turn ended up dying after a few weeks as well and then I went to the Fargo store in 2018 the body turn wasn't move it, working on that one either so the body turn motor is very faulty in these 2018 Michael Myers um, they're just and I'm like I'm surprised the body turn has not died on mine yet nothing has died on mine yet um, the relay switch in the arm actually does give out in these Michael Myers a lot so they're supposed to st stab twice and then the body turn but when the relay switch stop wor stops working they stab like continuously like three four times depending on how fast the motor is running uh, that's happened to mine now the relay switch is not working so the arm is just moving which doesn't really matter it doesn't make that much of a difference in this case uh, this this actually happens the person that bought the first Michael Myers on eBay that had that board issue ended up buying another one which has that issue it has the relay switch where it's just I think where it's just stabbing constantly mine's doing it I've seen plenty of other people's that do it but it doesn't really in fact it it's such so little of a problem it still stabs and it's not enough for me it doesn't really affect it like some of these other animatronics if a relay relay function isn't working because it's not like trying to force something to move that can't move it's still just it just limits how much it moves per body turn you know what I mean yeah uh, but it I kind of I like it just as much stabbing four times as I do it stabbing two times it really doesn't change anything for me but overall 2018 Michael Myers very faulty it could have been a really good animatronic it would have been a good animatronic and it would have a much better reputation if it wasn't so faulty I mean there's been there's been a lot of hit and miss with Michael Myers you know Jemmy is not Jemmy's current Michael Myers are not considered good at all this one was not considered good but it was liked because of the audio and people did like it for the movements that it did have people didn't like the mask the way the mask and eyes looked and but it being faulty as faulty as it is ruined everything it ruined the whole reputation for this animatronic now this animatronic this was a new company that was making animatronics at the time wo this was their first animatronic so it had a lot of failure because of that lots of when companies are new to making animatronics their first animatronics are almost always faulty they're always going to have issues because they're they're new to animatronics they don't know what they're doing they don't know what is required to make something not faulty and all that stuff but yeah its reputation with this michael myers reputation was very hurt by it being produced by a new company that hasn't experienced producing animatronics prior to this animatronic so therefore it's got a, a bad reputation for that all right next one is pop-up werewolf i know this was this was considered one of the faultiest anima spirit animatronics of all time and it is because it's you know number four on the list it's we're down here now we're almost done with this video thank god uh huh right <laughs> but <laughs> um it's it was an animatronic that rarely ever worked out of the box more than a handful of times some people got lucky and it did last some people a few seasons but this is another one of those animatronics that i've that i experienced three of them that that did not work right out of the box the first one i set up i've i think i've set told this story more than any 
This and the one that's coming up after this, I've told this these two more than any other faulty animatronic. I've talked about this so much that, yeah, you've heard me say this before. But the first one I set up in 2014, the first time it popped up, it would not go back down by itself. I would have to slam its head and then it would go down. Um, so I, I didn't even, it didn't even get seen by customers. I set this up before opening. It, our store was, it was in like, this wasn't before our store opening, but like it was before store hours opening. So, but either way, that's like totally different. But yeah, uh, it wasn't working. So I just took it away right away. And I put a pop-up grave zombie instead. But uh, yeah, it just didn't work right. So then, but I ended up buying one as well. And I bought mine during the 50% off sale. Uh, it, you know, I tested, it worked when I did the unboxing of it and set it up. But then when I did that collection video, this was the next day after that video. I did a Spirit Halloween collection video. It stopped going down in that video. Same problem the store display had. I had to slam the head or push on it slam or push to get it to start going back down with these pop-up werewolves it seemed like the motor with the spring force was so it seemed like the spring force was so powerful and there was so much torque with the gears but the motor wasn't strong enough to handle the torque and the spring force so you know once you once you pounded the head and stuff it would go back down and it would go back down fully but it's just that it it couldn't start on its own you had to give it a little bit of help and so that tells me they used really bad motors on it which is what made this faulty and the thing with this pop-up werewolf is that you know some animatronics if they don't go back down well they'll still activate again you know props are programmed motors are usually programmed to run for about 30 seconds and then they shut off and then it'll activate again it'll light up its eyes and do you know but these pop-up animatronics were designed to not stop trying to reset so they don't activate again unless they reset properly another problem is they had wires that would pull out they these animatronics would not work unless the head was fully connected uh, there was some like yeah there was some connection in the head that controlled the whole thing to operate and there would be a wire that would pull off on both this and the zombie the zombie didn't have the resetting issues that the werewolf had i don't know why the werewolf had the issues but the zombie didn't but they both suffered the issues of the wires coming loose in the head and not working at all the first 2014 zombie i bought had was not working at all straight out of the box it had that wire loose and then a few years later, I tried it again. I, I pushed on the head a little bit. It worked. Because I had I thought the board was originally fried, so I had them send me a new base. It still didn't work. So I bought another one in 2016, and that one worked. But a few years later, I tried it again, pushed on the head, and it worked. But then later on, it stopped working again, which I found out, yeah, it was a loose wire in the head. My werewolf quit working completely. Uh... Um, it and it was not the wire I thought for a while it was you know I want I was trying to change the motor it wouldn't work it just I could you know my werewolf even when I was able to get it to reset fully a lot of times it wouldn't start up again I used to have to just slam the shit out of it to get it to activate again and yeah after a while I just could not get it to activate well when I I tested it I plugged in the a body from a pop-up zombie to the uh, pop-up werewolf space. I tried fixing it in 2020, um, and I would get no power from it. There was no pa so my pop-up werewolf did have some type of board issue. Uh, it just wouldn't activate. It was not the wire in the head. Like I said, I tried a body from a pop-up zombie that was working, and it was not working when I plugged it in to the base of the werewolf. So something had died in my pop-up werewolf. So again, I set up another one. This is the third one. I set up that one. Th this video is very famous and popular on my channel. It's the werewolf that popped off the pole and flew off. And it's it kind of became a meme too. Um, but it was another one that, you know, broke straight out of the box. It was the first time it popped up. It flew off the pole 
and it would not go back down. This is not one that I, you know, if I slammed it, it would go back. It didn't go back down. I pushed it back down. Once I pushed it back down, it never activated it again. So what happened with this one is the wire likely, because it pulled off so violently, I think the wire did pull off in that head connection. But, um, yeah, it, I remember we had, we ended up getting another one in 2016. Um, the, the, we were selling out of animatronics, so the owner, the owner would sometimes take animatronics from our stores and take them to a different store. They, he did that in 2015. He took up all of our leftovers from 2014 and put them in a different store in 2015. But then in 2016, he did, he took animatronics from the other stores and put them in our store because our store was selling the animatronics the best that year our store owner owns five different spirit stories um he brought one of the pop-up werewolves and uh i remember a customer it was 50 it was already uh 50 off at this point it was only 50 dollars in 2016 they had marked it down majorly because it was i think so faulty and just n no one was buying pop-up werewolf was 150 dollars pop-up zombie was a hundred dollars the only difference between Pop-Up Werewolf is it included the adapter with it, whereas the zombie didn't, I don't think. And it featured volume control, which the zombie didn't. But those two fiends alone did not make it fifty worth $50 more. But, but later in 2014, they lowered his price down to $100. But in 2016, his price was $50. And some, li some regular customer with her kid uh, was interested in buying it. They had been... They would buy a few animatronics every year, year, and I told I was honest with them. I was like, you know, I've experienced three of them. They none of them have worked very well. You can try it; it may work for you. It may this one may be a good one. You know, I was you know, like I said, very open and honest. You know, p customers appreciate those types of honest things. But uh, they actually ended up buying it, and I remember uh, when they had came back later in the season i asked them if it I, they said they had bought the zombie before and it quit working and they wanted to buy a new pop-up zombie to replace a new pop-up prop to replace the zombie and so i uh, you know showed them this and that you know it's marked down a lot it's only fifty dollars it may work it may not work i don't know it's a gamble you're taking a gamble on this one but they came back later later in the season i asked them if it they worked they said it did it had no problems which kind of disappointed me because I'm like, wow, I couldn't have gotten lucky like that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure it doesn't work anymore. But the last time I saw that customer was 2018, 2019. Her son graduated, eventually graduated and now moved out of state. And her son was the reason why she had been buying animatronics. They, they did the display together. Well, he moved, he you know went to college and moved away now she doesn't do the displays anymore you know so she was talking about maybe selling the animatronics and i remember i was asking you know if you wanted to sell it, but i haven't seen her since that time that conversation and yeah but yeah pop-up werewolf it was i said a lot of things that probably didn't matter to the story but you know it's part of my story on why it's so faulty i'm this is my opinions and what my reasonings why i Believe, why I think these are my faulty animatronics because and these are my experiences with them so yeah that's pop up werewolf so number three is pop and goblin um pop and goblin is another pop up animatronic that had lots of failures it's another one I've had three of that have failed um my first yeah it, it's funny in 2012 I our store only got three of each animatronic, including store display. For the most, there was a few like Ghost Girl and maybe some others that we got more than three of. But everything else, just three, including the display. And remember, I bought like one of each animatronic in 2012, and I ended up getting the, the store displays at the end of the season, which leads only one ended up selling. One of each animatronic ended up selling to customers, a lot of them and pop up pop, pop and goblin i got all three from my store our store only got three the first one i bought stopped had the did the same thing as the jackal under i i took it home i plugged it in it went out of the pumpkin popped up but it wouldn't reset the the pump it wouldn't close back it wouldn't go the thing with pop and goblin is it's a very it's very weird 
a weird design mechanism. The goblin, how it works is towards the end of the track that it slides out from, something releases it to pop up. And when it slides all the way back, it's not... T yeah, It's so hard to explain because it's so weird. It's not like a normal way to make a pop-up animatronic. It... You know, it only pops up if it's in that pers if it's in that certain track, that certain spot on that track. Anywhere else, it can retract, but if it's it, it can't retract if it's on that part because that's what releases the prop. Um, well, it wouldn't it wouldn't slide back forward. So once I got it to go back down, um. It it would it was slowly 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 going back into the pumpkin, which when something moves super super slow and it's not intended to move super super slow, it means something's shorting out on it because it started smoking. I smelt it burning and smoke started shooting out of it. This happened with all these animatronics: Jack Lunger, Michael Myers. There's another animatronic that does this that I will be discussing. Um. But yeah, Pop and Goblins, that was a majority of Pop and Goblins issues. Just that a general board issue where a component would blow up and it would start smoke, short out and sm smoke, you know. Um, and my first Goblin did that on the first try. <laughs> um, I took it back, of course, the same night. I because I got it after my shift one night of working at Spirit and then took it home and that, begged my mom to take it back and get a different one that same night <laughs> um the second one lasted longer uh, but it stopped working after halloween the relay switch stopped working for when it goes back into the pumpkin it's so weird sometimes when the relay switch doesn't work the motor will just buzz a little bit but sometimes it'll click really really loud it is so annoying but it started doing that on halloween in 2012 and Shortly after, I I didn't like my second. My first one was the fastest one that popped up. The second one would pop up, but it would slip back down. Kind of like Henry Hustle last year. Some of them, you know, the heads would pop up, but slip back down. My second goblin did that. And I didn't like it, so it a little bit of his chin was still hidden in the pumpkin. So after my display, I tried stretching out the springs to make it. And I it did end up jumping up all the way. But literally... After I made the video of that, where its relay switch wasn't working properly, and I had stretched the springs, it started malfunctioning, and it started smoking. So, it ended up dying. So, the third one was actually our the one we set up at the store. So, this store display was used at the store for about two months. It lasted the whole 2012 season. I bought it in 2013. Uh, it was a leftover. I bought it the next year. I didn't have any more money left over after all the stuff I bought in 2012. Uh, and my goblin broke after Halloween. The store was already closed. So I bought the uh, the display in 2013. Um, it actually lasted the longest out of all the, the other two goblins I had. You know, it was a store display, so it worked for two months already. It had a chipped gear that where it sli slid in and out of the track so it would twitch and click and stuff. But it still functioned. Um, I did not use that animatronic a lot because I did not want it to die like my other two did. Uh, so I always only used it on step pad. Um, but as of recently, in uh, in 2018, it worked fine the first night. It worked the whole night on sensor, I believe. Fair, nothing, no issues. But the second night, the relay switch started to fail where it would slide back in the pumpkin and do that clicking thing you know um and then in 2019 i tried to i tried to fix it but the, i couldn't get i the relay switches on those i cannot fix for some reason i i think it might be a component on the board that goes out for the relay switch on those because sometimes I can't find a problem with the relay switch on those. I don't. I actually can't find a piece that hits the relay. I don't know. I don't know how that. It's such a weird design. Getting into it, you can't get into that animatronic very well. It's just. It's like Jackalunger. It's not one of those ones that are easily fixable. 
So um, I think the relay switch issue is sometimes what ends up causing these malfunctions to happen because that's I think what caused my second one to have issues and once my third goblins it worked fine all these years it was the weakest pop-up one of the it also popped up very weak compared to the other two I had but it also lasted the longest so I think the relay switch is somewhat what causes these to go bad once the relay switch fails you're kind of screwed it's only a matter of time before it shorts out because you know in 2019 I remember I tried plugging it in and it, it kept shutting off it wouldn't I thought it would there's a lot of times where the, our adapters on our props it's just the adapters that go bad so I wasn't sure if it was that so in 2020 I uh, I tried it out with a different adapter and it was working I had it here with my evil cauldron witch it worked it still clicked I couldn't fix the relay switch that was something I couldn't fix and so I, it was I just had to let it be oh I, I, I just realized I don't have his page pulled up um, um, but yeah the in 2020 before our display we do a test we do a test run of the display before the two nights of our display just to make sure everything's up and working properly because these animatronics again are sitting in my unit all year so some of these animatronics that were working last year that I think are fully working may not be fully working. Something might have something might have broken on on them while they've been sitting in my unit all year. So we do a test run or during transportation while we transfer them to the U from the unit to the house, something can get broken on them that I don't know got is broken on them until we start testing. During testing where we had everything up and going, Pop and Goblin ended up shorting out uh in 2020 it uh it stopped it wasn't going down but i don't know if it's the sliding part i don't i don't know if it's the part that goes down that stopped or if it's the sliding part that stopped either way it doesn't work at all anymore it completely stopped where the other two goblins they would still light up and talk and the first one it wouldn't was the sliding back in that shorted out uh, my second one might have I think it was the resetting I don't think it was the sliding one on the second I might not be remembering properly but the third one I'm not sure which one it was because I didn't see it when it started shorting out I saw it when it was no longer working the lights were out on it I couldn't get it to turn on I had to forcefully I think pull it up and stuff it's not even fully out of the pumpkin I had to kind of you know where the lid is where it closes and the pumpkin i had to pull it apart and try to so that he's still visible you know he he yeah he just shorted out and again i think it's because of the relay switch failure i think that led it to overheating and shorting out there are some people that still have a goblin that works but I always say it's only a matter of time before it suffers the issues that all three of mine suffered. Because again, if you have, if you've had three of them fail on you, chances are it's a common problem that the others are gonna suffer later on. But like I said, every animatronic is different. Like I said, my first goblin did it on the first try. My second goblin lasted, you know, a little while while I had it, but it eventually did that. Now, and the third one lasted years of me owning it and well again it lasted two months at set up at the store when i i only activated it about eight times total like you know when i had all those spirit halloween parties and stuff it was only activated like a handful of times each year that i had parties or did room halloween room videos i only activated like one or two times you know it was not activated much when i owned it so it was used the most in the store and during our displays so but yeah number two on the list I put headless help from 2019 it's an animatronic made by YJ it's a headless butler it's holding its head it's I it all it all the animation it has is a moving mouth and blinky blinking eyes the blinking eye animation is barely even visible because the eyelids and the eyes are almost the same shade coloring that you almost can't notice the blinking eyes. 
but you know YJ is has a problem when it comes to animatronics with moving mouse the moving mouse always fail but some animatronics have more than just a moving mouth from YJ which you know when the mouth breaks it's not completely pointless like zombie well zombie barrel is the only YJ prop that the mouth has never broke on for me head banner zombie bloody bag of jokes you know their mouths may break but they still have another animation that saves them from being a faulty prop because when YJ makes animatronics, animatronics that don't have moving mouths they rarely ever fail but whenever they make an animatronic that almost exclusively or that mouth movement in general always fails on every YJ prop if it's a prop with a moving mouth it's gonna fail eventually it's always happened with YJ Jemmy not so much Techie only Broken Spine Girl and Gruesome Granny have had mouth problems um, for, from Techie but YJ it's every single one of them it's always the mouth pieces that break this is not an upper jaw movement prop. It, the mouthpiece still breaks anyways. You know what I forgot to include on the list that is equally as bad as him is Forgotten Farmer. But Forgotten Farmer is worse because for this last... None of these... If anyone owns a headless help, it's not going to last forever. The mouth will break at some point. I had thought I came up with a fix that would prevent it from breaking, which was using a lower voltage adapter. It, it's supplied with a 6 volt 2 amp adapter. I used a 4.5 volt adapter on our, the one we set up in 2020. It did last longer. It lasted 3 weeks. These headless helps only lasted 2 weeks maximum. At, at every store, the mouse were broken on these within 2 weeks. If 2 weeks. Some of them were a few days. Some were a week. Ours I think was 2 weeks. The one in 2019. But when I used the lower adapter on the one we had set up in 2020 it lasted three weeks about which so it lasted longer but it still ended up breaking um so it's one of those animatronics that it its mouth is not going to stay working no matter what you do i think you're going to have to 3d print a new mouthpiece for it if you want it to keep it working but the latex rubber around the head is so thin that when you pull it up to try to you're, it's gonna look terrible. It's one of those animatronics that isn't gonna look very good after you repair it. Another thing is the eye blinking is even faulty on these. The 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 eye blinking stopped working on our 2020 or on our 2019 one. We uh, got a different store's carryover in 2020, and there was one that was a store display from the store that we got the carryover from. The eyes and mouth were broken on that one as well. Now the eyes I think will last if you use a lower voltage adapter because I think the eye blinking breaks because a 6 volt amp is too much power for just eye blinking and mouth movement. It doesn't need 6 volt of, of power to move those features. Um, and I think, like I said, using the lower voltage uh, did uh, make the lifespan longer for the mouth but the eyes did not end up breaking on it. So, because when the eyes blink, they didn't blink all the way. They would blink a little. They would blink. Well, they would blink all the way. But it, the six volt adapter, the blink, the eyes blink too hard, I guess, and it puts strain on the little p tiny plastic pieces, and it ends up breaking. I don't know. But yeah, it. You know, and there's no other movement. If it, if this animatronic had body turn or something. It could have saved this animatronic and not made it completely pointless, but I don't even count this animatronic as this prop as an animatronic because once the mouth breaks, it's completely pointless. This prop came with a microphone that you could talk through it, but when the mouth breaks, there's no point in that feature because you're not gonna the mouth is not gonna be moving to what you're saying through it, so nobody's gonna notice it. A voice coming out of it if the mouth isn't moving. It's not a very loud animatronic at that either. It's got a crappy speaker box. It wasn't good sound quality. It wasn't very loud. So when the mouth breaks, it is a pointless animatronic. Like I said, the eye blinking is very is not very noticeable because the shading of the eyelids and the eyes were 
similar coloring so it was not noticeable when it blinked. So this animatronic was just a flop. It classified as a static animatronic, not even as an animatronic, and this had a $230 price tag. Way too expensive for something that has too little movements that neither function stay working. It should have been 150 maximum. Um, okay, next, the last two. Sweeney Scarecrow. Well, I don't know why I put this as like the most faulty. It is not the most faulty. But in terms of when they were set up in stores, every store, just like Headless Help, it's made by YJ. The mouse were... With the Sweeney Scarecrow, it was actually our first when we set up our store. Stopped working on opening day. We... I had it set up before opening. You know, I had it on sensor testing it. It worked fine. But on opening day, the mouth had already... The wire... This is where another one of those ones I was talking about where the wires are zip-tied to where there's not enough... There's too much tension being pulled on the wire as the prop is moving so it yanks off that's what happens with swinging scarecrow um, it pulls off the wire plug the plug that goes into the head uh, that connects to the it's stupid they put the uh, the head um, a lot of times will lift there's no clamp that holds the head on they they put the the prawn that connects to the head mouth movement in the back of the head there's a dummy prawn in the front that does it, it there's a plug but there's no wires it, there's no feature they, if it had light up eyes that's what the front prawn would be for but it doesn't it just has a dummy prawn just to hold the head but it doesn't hold the head enough the head will eventually yank come forward and disconnect the head from the plug so it's really stupid but like sometimes that cause cause it was wobbly it would cause the prawn to wiggle a little maybe that also pulled on the wire a little bit but it's mostly just the rocking it was zip the, the wires were zip tied too short and it would pull and the wire would pull off the mouth the first one like i said stopped working within a day we ended up setting up another one this one was a different issue. It was not the wire. The mouth on the scarecrow moves so rapidly at, with the voice, which makes it really cool. But the uh, the contacts on the inside of the motor ended up uh, bending and start touching. You know, it it would make a sizzling noise when the mouth. You can tell when the inside of a motor is not right if it's making like a sizzling type sound when it's moving or something there is something wrong with the contacts they're they're starting to touch they should the brushes on the inside are touching the way they shouldn't be touching it's it's getting caught on something which causes a malfunction and a short which leads to the smoking problem that's what happened with our second display it ended the whole thing it started smoking this happened when I wasn't at the store. Some the old boss of our store said the thing was smoking, like the smoke was shooting out of it. They took it off the display. Um, so yeah, I didn't end up fixing that one because I couldn't get into the head to replace the motor and fix that problem. Then we had one that a customer returned that a wire had pulled off the mouth. Um, so. I ended up actually fixing that one because the first one I completely messed up. I thought the wire was off from inside of the head, so I pulled apart the whole head. I messed the whole thing up. I messed I screwed it up the first one up so bad. But the the second one I but I learned from that mistake with the second one I fixed, I fixed it properly and it worked the rest of the season after I fixed it. And then our store had another one. Got another one in twenty seventeen. It was another it, situation where the owner brought store animatronics from another store this was a previous store display as well this was already used before i think at another store the the mouse stopped working on that one as well but this one wasn't the wire it was another issue that ended up frying because uh, i remember uh we set it up again in 2018 i took it apart because i expected it to be a wire and most of them are a wire because a lot of times when they would move the mouth would twitch a little bit indicating that 
there's something loose not making a good connection but that one I opened it up because it in tw in late to 2017 I smelt a burning smell coming from it but in 2018 I opened it up and the wire was not off it was fried well I also bought a Sweeney Scarecrow in 2016 as well mine with in the, the first year we started doing a display with Lucas it the wire came off for the mouth movement I fixed it I made a video fixing it repairing it showing how to fix it it worked but last year it suffered the issue of the smoking problem it the part on the the component that controls the mouth movement on the board blew out it smoked the, that whole part of the board was burnt up and it's all crispy and it disintegrates as you touch it it yeah with what I think what caused it with mine though is I think well, some of my techie 6 volt 2 amp adapters are a voltage higher than what they're supposed to be. Some of the some of my techie adapters have a voltage of seven volts, and one of those adapters was being used on Sweeney Scarecrow because it was actually swinging a lot faster than what it normally should, and the mouth was moving much faster and stronger than what it typically does, and I think that caused it to overheat a lot more and cause issues. Oh yeah, the motor ended up dying in it I found out the motor was dead so it was one of those scenes where the contacts on the motor got messed up and that's what caused that component to blow up in it so that's probably what happened to our the display we had in 2017 as well the next animatronic has the same issue which is why it's number one on the list but it's worse than the scarecrow and headless help it's a Deadly Roots. I chose Deadly Roots as the number one most faulty animatronic that Spirit has ever sold because I have not really seen a video of Deadly Roots that works perfectly. The mouth always breaks on Deadly Roots. Always. And it's worse than Sweeney Scarecrow. Like, Sweeney Scarecrow, it takes a while. It takes a while for that problem to happen. And that problem only happens when the motor starts malfunctioning. When the inside of the motor starts breaking. But Deadly Roots had issues a lot of times straight out of the box. Um, there were people, there was Deadly Roots that broke a few hours after being set up at certain stores. Ours, our first one that we set up lasted maybe a week or two weeks I don't know I didn't think it was a faulty prop at first because like I said just because a, a prop is seen for the first time not working doesn't mean it's automatically faulty so I give you know I give it you know a few more tries new taking out new ones and trying them and if they break in the same way then yes then it's officially classified as faulty like I said at the beginning of this video but yeah there were there were there were some that would only last a few activations, a few days. It, regardless, there was never a Deadly Roots that worked longer than probably a week. Um, and it's I think it's faultier than Pop-Up Werewolf because simply I don't think there's any owners of a Deadly Roots where Deadly Roots is still fully functional that has never needed any type of repla or repairing. The only person I can think of that might have a Deadly Roots that has never needed fixing is Mr. Spooktician, the guy that did the review on the Rosemary Zombie Girl when it first came out. That's so iconic, you know. Um, but his Deadly Roots might still work, but he doesn't use his props very much. So his like props don't really typically run into issues, even if he gets a prop that's classified as faulty. <laughs> But it's gonna happen one of these seasons that he ends up using it because the same thing that happens with the Scarecrow happens with this, but it's worse. It happens much faster on this animatronic. His mouth moves more violently. I feel like the more violently the mouth moves when they have a big mouth, it wrecks the motor and it, then it causes a short. And that's... We went... I swapped the head three times on our display. The first one, when the mouth stopped working, I took a head from a different one and put it on that display 
the the first one I set up didn't even move. The body barely moved at all. That's another thing that was faulty. The, there was a uh, there's a bolt that would go through that the body going forward had a cable that would pull the whole body back. Nothing. There was nothing in that actually moved the body besides this arms being spring loaded and a spring pushing the prop forward. There is something that releases the that pushes the a gear out of place, and then these springs push the prop forward, and then this cable pulls the prop back. A lot of times, there was a, it was held by a screw that went through with a nut that would loosen up and the screw would fall out. So the cable in there would be spinning, not attached to anything. And this happened with mine. This happened with the one that our store set up in 2018. It happened. There was a lot of them in this way. They're just were forward and they're not being pulled back because that nut had fallen out. That screw and nut had fallen out. That makes it retract. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's just faulty all the way around. But... If the mouth doesn't suffer the frying problem, the mouthpieces are going to break anyways. Because um, again, the first one it was the mo it was the our the fir our first one it was the smoking problem. It no, it, just the motor died on our first one. It wasn't the board. It nothing smoked. Or, it was just the motor that died because that's the head from our first store display is the one that I own for my deadly roots and I swapped the faces out I took one out of a different box and used it on the display one's body that one the mouthpieces broke first and then the motor died no then it did that smoking thing and I didn't hear the motor running anymore and then after a while the prop didn't work at all the whole thing was dead um, so it the whole thing killed itself um, and then we set up a whole new one, new face, new body, new everything. Worked perfectly. Same thing happened. The the mouthpieces for the mouth split. And then the motor stopped. I heard the motor stop moving for the mouth. So the 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 head I got for mine, like I said, was our first displays. I fixed I I replaced the motor. I made a video replacing the motor on Jemmy Master Animatronics. It worked great after that but uh in 2018 our second day of the yard display the mouthpieces split so yeah uh i haven't had it the mouth working since i got some pieces ordered from skull crane for the deadly roots because i ordered the 29th they really they they made a new batch of them for online only the next season which I had hoped were improved models. I made a, you know, the paint detail on the face was a little different. I made a video on Jemmy Master Animatronics comparing the 2017, and this is a late 2019 model because it had sold out in 2018 and it came back again late 2019, but I bought it in 2020 when I think there was only seven left in stock. Um, I was hoping it was better quality and it wasn't going to have any mouth problems, you know, but, uh, Last year, 2021, in the display, mouthpieces split. So it's still, it was, the mouth was, maybe it has a better motor for the mouth movement, so it doesn't short out, but the mouthpieces were not changed. They still suck. Because that animatronic was not used barely at all. I used it a little bit while it was here, then it went straight to the storage unit. I got it in 2020, so it was used two nights in 2020 and two nights in 2021. Used four nights total. You know, again, 12, 12 hours each season. So, yeah, maybe 24 hours. Maybe it's got... But it broke before the night ended of our second night of last year. So it, it actually broke early in the night. Early in the night. So technically it only lasted three nights and the mouth had broke. Um, so yeah, and I can even, I have it with me, I can show it. I wonder how long this video has been. Holy crap, two hours? No way. Okay, so here's my Deadly Roots. This is my 2019 model. Um, so, if you look, okay, let me see what...
I can't see. Oh. 